I'm gonna shit myself. <laughs> I've sharded. I've sharded before. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First Week Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Charlemagne the God. Sean, hey. What's up, my brother? You know him from The Breakfast Club on Power 105, his show Uncommon Sense Live on MTV2. Yep. And he's here to promote his new book, Black Privilege, Opportunity Comes to Those Who Create It. Charlemagne, welcome to the show. All factual. No alternative facts for spitting anything you said just Hey, now. how are you with hot food? Um, it depends, man. I got weird bowels. Like, like, like anything makes me shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, it's not that I dislike hot food. I just know what it does to my butthole later, and I'm not like into burning buttholes. Well, are you ready to get it going? Let's do it. So this first one is sriracha. Sriracha is no big deal. Mmm. Mmm. It's not bad at all. So I have a mm. million questions about The Breakfast Club, but I won't keep you all day, so I'll keep them to my most pressing. Talk to me. What do you think is the closest you've ever been to getting punched in the face during an interview? Uh, Nelly. Everybody always looks at the real hostile, intense ones, like Birdman or Fredro Star, but Nelly, because I actually, I actually believe Nelly will fight you. First time he came to the breath club, I told him, Are you, you cold out here right now, bro. Ain't nobody really checking for pen juice no more. <laughs> and he was like, you know, we keep retaining this for people like you, man. Which artist do you think gives the best interviews right now? The older artists are always the best, but definitely Fat Joe and Nori are two at the top. I love Herb Gotti too. I like talking to Herb Gotti too. If you think about awkward interviews, is there one that stands out? I mean, I think we've interviewed D'Amigos at least four or five times. And I think we might have only aired one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> because it's just like, what are we talking about? Whose reaction to being donkey of the day surprised you the most? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton gave us a sound bite that I use in one of the donkey of the day intros now. Hillary Clinton said, oh, I, I, I'm a Democrat. So being a donkey is sort of a mixed blessing. Like that was surprising to me. First of all, I was surprising that she even knew what the hell donkey of the day was. That's number one. And she didn't take offense to it at all. Which celebrity hates you the most, if you had to guess? It's a toss. I'm blocked by a lot of people. Birdman's got me blocked on Twitter. Odell Beckham Jr., Chili from TLC, Ashanti, Amy Schumer. Really? Yeah. It'd be like random. Powerful I'd... list, though. Good, good, good group of people <laughs> to be blocked by. Absolutely. Which rapper do you think has the best chance of stealing your job? Rapper? Mm hmm. None. Mm. Not bad. Going in. I want to talk to you about being a superhero fanatic for a second, because in addition to having Wolverine tattooed on your right arm, you were able to star and write in your own Marvel comic recently. Absolutely. MCs, I think, used to be really influenced by superheroes, yeah. and even like Method Man and MF Doom, those sound like comic book characters. Do you think that that's sort of been washed away? And if so, do you think that there's some other thing that's bubbling up and filling that void? Mm. That's a good question, because you don't really hear too many comic book references. You used to hear them all the you time. You used to hear them all the time. I think it's because people play the streets too close. So all of their material is coming from, like, what's going on in the hoods. Like, back in the day, the artists were, like, a lot more creative. So they were, like, literally rapping about any and everything. Like, mm -hmm. you'd hear Kung Fu references. You'd hear comic book references. You'd hear, like, great sitcom references. Now everything is about the trap. Nobody reading no comic books in the trap. All right, so this next one is El Yucateco. What the hell is that? I don't even see that on the table. This that one right one. here. Okay. All right. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. I want to talk to you about your relationship with Kanye West for a second because mm -hmm. you guys have such an interesting dynamic. On one hand, you're really able to poke that hornet's nest of his ego, but on the other hand, you seem to have some of the more honest discussions that I hear from Kanye West. Yeah. Talking to him face to face, have you seen a major change over the last couple of years? Because from the outside looking in, that's always the topic of endless fascination. You know, what is the reinvention, the new persona in Kanye West, and what's the real Kanye West? Well, if you've seen the movie Get Out, I definitely think Kanye's in the sunken place. And I think that he's been in the sunken place ever since he got with Kim Kardashian. That's why I call him Kanye Kardashian. Because if you think about where Kanye was, Kanye was almost like an activist. Like if it was something going on in the community, you could count on Kanye West to call it out. 
And then it's like over time, he just got real industry tutionalized, it seems like. And the only interest he cared about was things that was going on in the industry, whether it was music and, you know, the Grammy showing artists the proper respect, or whether it was fashion and, you know, trying to break through in the fashion industry as a black man. And he just got farther and farther away from the pavement, so to speak. I feel like, you know, he's doing us a grave disservice because I feel like Kanye has one of those real powerful voices, man. He has one of those voices that cut through to everybody. Not just black people, not just white people, everybody listens to Kanye West. And I feel like he could really be using his voice for more than just, you know, telling us to buy sneakers. So with the milk, people actually drink the milk and coat their stomach? So the milk is, uh, you know, the dairy will kind of cut the heat a little bit. But not you, Charlamagne, you're not going for the milk. No, dairy make me shit. <laughs> I don't drink cow milk. Dairy Doesn't everything like make you shit? Mm-hmm. I think I need a colonic. So I'm sure that you've been asked about the Birdman incident in every interview that you've had since Put Some Respect on My Name became the meme of the year, but I, I do it. need a postmortem of my own. Okay. When he stormed out of the studio, what was the immediate conversation that you had with Angela Yee and Envy? What was the first thing you guys talked about? Do you remember? Well, I know the first thing I said, why the fuck would you even come here if you don't want to have a conversation? And yes, I've said, why would you sign the Birdman? Seeing his history of not paying artists. Mm -hmm. He said I was messing up his money by saying that. So I thought he was coming to have the conversation. He came with all those people, but he was in the lobby and Eminem Lose Yourself was playing. Now, I don't know if he had Lose Yourself in his headphones and it was just loud or if Lose Yourself was on the radio. I just vividly remember Eminem Lose Yourself playing and he was just kind of pacing back and forth. Getting in the zone. Getting ready to lose it in the moment. At what point did you know that it was kind of flying off the rails in a way that would make a big wave on the internet? Did you I, know right away? I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even think it was going to make a big wave on the internet because I didn't see all those little nuances like him folding his arms and the voice stuttering. The, and are, are we finished or are we done? Are we finished or are we done? <laughs> them singing, them, them storming out in a single file line. Like they stormed out in a single file line. I'm gonna shit myself. <laughs> I've sharded, I've sharded before. And it, it was spicy food. It was Jamaican food. I ate it the night before. I was in Columbia, South Carolina. And I had just dropped my girl off to her dorm. And I was trying to get back to my apartment. And I felt my stomach rumbling crazy. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna fart to relieve a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. But when I fought it, I shit on myself. And so I had to When it rumbles, you have to be careful. Yeah, absolutely. So I shot it. I had on some Jinko jeans, so Jinko used to be <laughs> popping. I had some black Jinko jeans. I had to throw them away. You know, you have donkey of the day, but we have our own recurring segment here on Hot Ones. It's okay. called Explain That Gram. And what we do is we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram. We pull interesting pictures. So what I'll do is I'll show you the picture off your Instagram. Okay. If you could just tell me the bigger story. Does All that right. sound good? All right, laptop, please. Laptop. First one. Bottles for Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. so historically, I've always slandered Drake. And um, I really liked the way he handled his beef with Meek Mill. Like if somebody challenges you on your writing skills and challenges you on your art, you attack him with your art. So he asked me to come see his show, I went to go see it. Like, So I went backstage and we took that picture just to piss off some people. <laughs> and really, that picture is really just us being dickheads. Like, no, seriously, that was mm -hmm. like, let's be some dickheads right now. Because he had all his issues going on with, you know, hot. I'm like, hey, let's be dickheads right now. Well, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Absolutely. Tell me what's going on in this pick. Kanye West, that was last year. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. That was last year at the VMAs. Kanye like, he got titties in that picture. He needed some push-ups. <laughs> Lord have mercy. In that moment right there, we were just talking about how dope Tiana Taylor was. And I said, I'm glad that you're finally pushing her. Because if you watch the last Breakfast Club interview, I said, why aren't you pushing Tiana Taylor? Tiana Taylor's a star. Right. Like she got the look. Tiana can sing her ass off. She can dance. She's still young. Tiana's only like, what, 24, 25 or some shit like that? She has a personality. She got the personality. Like, why aren't you pushing Tiana Taylor? She's a star. And he was proving to me, look, that's what we about to do. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you, Phaedra. You brought the floss? You're prepared, man. Yeah, man. Which one is this? How you doing so far? I feel like you're doing really well. I'm cool. I'm good down south, man. I eat possum. <laughs> I had possum before. That actually relates to the next question. I mm -hmm. love how this always happens or always seems to happen on Hot Ones. Okay. Because you once replied to a First We Feast video, the one with DJ Khaled's restaurant in Miami, by saying, I love finger licking. My fat ass watched this video twice. First, 
thank you for the retweet and for the repeat view. Mm -hmm. Second, if you were to invest in the food space, which road do you think you'd go down? Would you go down the Jay-Z nightclub road? Would you go down the DJ Khaled open up your own shop road? Would you go down the Rick Ross Wingstop Checkers franchise road? Have you ever thought about it? Yeah, not, not only have I thought about it, I'm doing it. I mean, right now I'm doing the franchise thing, but I don't mind finger licking though. Because with See the God, it's sometimes hard to tell. Would yeah. it be sort of uh, an authentic South Carolina barbecue spot? Would it be a green juice shop? Have you ever thought about what the concept might be? I feel like I could do all of them. Like, I mean, I could feel like I could, I could have a barbecue spot that serves green juice. And then you've been around the game for a long time. I wonder if you've ever been to any of those sort of lesser known rap spots. You know, uh, Fat Joe, he had that spot, uh, City Island Express. No, uh, I've never been there. Dougie Fresh, he had like a chicken and waffles joint. In I used Harlem. to go there all the time and it never would be open. When the outside of it, it's got the graffiti yep. and all that. It would never be open, ever. And Fat Joe, I would never go to that spot. Not because of Fat Joe, but because I, I have a, I feel like the Bronx, the Bronx yeah, explain in to me. all of Florida have the craziest people in the world. <laughs> all right, something's happening. All right. That's a little bit tougher, Charlemagne, huh? Yes, indeed. <laughs> I see what's happening. So on Hot Ones, we're always trying to mix it up with our guests, and mm -hmm. Breakfast Club is kind of on the same wavelength sometimes. On one hand, you kind of know what to expect, but then sometimes you'll throw in these curveballs like Maury Povich and Dr. Oz. I love it. I'm going to see him right now, and that's why I hope I'm not on his set sweating because of these goddamn <laughs> Hot Wings. So what I want to do is uh, bounce some of the more offbeat guests that you guys have had over okay. the last year or so and just kind of get your reaction to them, okay? Martin Shkreli. Uh, a privileged prick. Straight digital dickhead. He's a troll. Like I, it, 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 I don't think he has the money that he says he has. He and should be getting his damn Blizzard on, but he's not. He's on Twitter fucking with people and always lying about having new music and this and that. Like he's a, he's a, he, I don't, he's he's a clown. Malcolm Gladwell. I love Malcolm Gladwell. You know, I used to read all Malcolm's books. I read um, The Outliers. I read, you know, David and Goliath. I read Blink. Um, I read The Tipping Point. So before I knew him, I felt like I knew him. Lena Dunham. I love Lena Dunham. I've always liked Lena Dunham. I've liked Lena Dunham since girls. I call her my problematic princess. You got it. Get on top of it. Woo! All right, are you ready to move on? How you doing? I mean, I ain't got no choice. <laughs> you don't. We really have you, like, kind of, like, captured on this show. So what is this, the bomb? This is the bomb beyond insanity, hot sauce. Okay. Mmm. Charlemagne. Okay. Tough one. Mm. Tough wing. Mm. Gotta respect it though, Charlemagne. You're going mm. bone to bone on every single one of these. Woo! <sighs> Breathe. Breathe. Okay. So I wanna to talk to you about your book for a second and mm -hmm. specifically creating one's own opportunities. As somebody who's deeply ingrained in TV and radio and the entertainment industry in general, yeah. where do you think... <laughs> oh, one second, hold on. Mm -mm. Mm. Woo what would you say is the number one fuck up people make when they're trying to break through in this industry? Number one fuck up people make is that they can't see opportunity unless it's a paycheck attached to it. I mean, I started off as an unpaid intern at Z93 Jams in Charleston, South Carolina. I mean, prior to that, I was fucking selling crack and working at Taco Bell. But it's like, the radio was just different for me because it was actually the radio. Like, you know, I'm from most corner of South Carolina. We used to listen to the radio all the time, Z93 Jams. It was a big deal just to get a shout out. And, um, I just loved it. So I was literally doing it for free. You know, even with Wendy, which was like my first real break, break in the game, her husband was like, look, we can't pay you, but we can give you a place to stay. Now imagine if I'd have been at like one of these little entitled millennials out here and been like, nah, I need to get some bread, bro. Like me, I'm like, all right, cool. Cause I understand the opportunity. I know that if I go on Wendy's show and do what I'm supposed to do, I can write my own ticket. Not, that, that, I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying right now because my tongue is on fire. <sighs> All right, what 
right, what's this? So this is Mad Dog 357. It used to be our hottest hot sauce. It's now our second hottest hot sauce. It says use at your own risk. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, it means it's on you, whatever happens. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm -hmm. At this point, I don't feel anything. I think the bomb kind of numbs you that out. That is a, a fact. Bit. That is a goddamn fact. I don't know what's happening. Clean and wings? Look at you, Charlemagne. Mm. So anyone who watches you on TV or listens to you on the radio knows that you're really good at getting under people's skin. But those who follow you on Twitter and Instagram know that people on the internet can get it the exact same way. Can you give me the art of war when it comes to <coughs> teeing off on somebody on Twitter? On Twitter? He definitely is more water. Listen, on Twitter, Oh, there's some in there. Okay, listen. I got you. On, on Twitter and social media, period, you can't win. I've only seen one person beat the internet. Who? Tom Brady. Tom yeah. Brady beat the goddamn internet. That Super Bowl night, if you remember correctly, <laughs> yeah. Tom Brady was getting, getting it. killed. Getting oh killed. my God, we was slaughtered. I mean, I, I, I'm not even a Patriots fan, I'm a Cowboy fan. We was slaughtering Tom Brady. And then fourth quarter, the joke turned right around on the I've never seen that before in my life. Tom Brady's the only person that can beat the internet. Because so sometimes like, you'll respond. Oh, all the time. I love mm -hmm. it. Like my friend, like the Bobs are on me right now. The Bobs hate me right now. The Bobs hate me because they feel like I hate Nicki Minaj, which isn't true at all. I've always liked Nicki. But <clears throat> I don't like some of the shit she does. I'm trying to get blogs to pull things and websites to pull stories and radio stations to stop saying certain things. Like, fuck all that. This is hip hop. Like, you're not right. exempt from anything that's being done in the culture. You're not exempt from getting talked about in the culture. So I wanted her to respond <laughs> on some hip hop shit. <laughs> it's that Onika Voodoo or the hot sauce. Which, uh, which celebrity's fan base has the most vicious Twitter onslaught? Who are the toughest? Is it, oh, is it the Beehive? Is it the Bars? Is it the Navy? It's the Beehive and it's not even close. The Beehive has destroyed careers. We ain't heard from Carrie Hilson in a long That's time, bro. I'm gonna tell you who's the, the worst too. Not on the level of the Beehive, cause they don't have no impact. Sierra's crickets. They talk so much shit online, but don't buy her albums. If y'all motherfuckers was as active buying her albums as y'all are talking shit to people, she'd be popping. All right, Charlemagne. How you doing, my man? I'm doing decent. I don't know what it is. I think we got. Also, there's nothing on there. No, there is. There is Charlemagne, but it's tradition around here. Put a little extra dab on the last one. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I'm here now. What do you call a dab? Just a little bit. That's Be careful. Long. Be careful. Oh. That's good. That's okay. good. That's good. Don't worry. Here you go. Here you go. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Charlemagne. Seeping in just a little bit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Taking out that water. It's all right. We got to swap in. Oh, okay. I'm decent. Mm. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. Oh. Oh. Not an easy one, Charlemagne. Not oh. an easy one. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You're gonna piss yourself on Dr. Oz. I don't think you have to worry about Shardy. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, man. There's really no need to ever do that unless you're doing this show. All right, now that we're dying on Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage, I have one more question for you. You know, I know that there's no love lost between Hot 97 and Power 105, and now that the hot sauce is digging deep mm -hmm. into you, finding that bottom of your soul right now, I do wonder if you had to give a compliment, say the nicest thing that you possibly could about Rosenberg and Ebro, what would that nice thing be? That's impossible. If you had said Flex, yeah, Flex is a legend. That's, that's under, you, if you, you grew up in hip hop and you say that Funk Master Flex isn't a legend, you're just a hating. But I don't, I don't even, those other two, I don't, I don't even acknowledge them. 
can't even think of nothing good to say if I try. Rosenberg called you the devil. I might be to him. Mm. 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 I feel like the goddamn devil right now because I am burning <laughs> up. You might be burning up, but you know what, Charlemagne? You made it through. Why are you screaming? You ate Charlotte. the wings down to the bone. You took out at least two or three pitchers of water, but I love it. I respect it. Mm. This camera, this camera, or this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Diarrhea. It feels like something, <laughs> something bad is about to happen. But yeah, black privilege, opportunity comes to those who create it. April 18th, you can pre order now at wherever you buy books Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever. And um, listen to the Breakfast Club every morning. In Uncommon Sense, every Friday at 11.30 on MTV2. <laughs> it's, always, it's always a show we have to apologize for, Charlotte. <laughs> hey, you don't. I knew what I signed up for. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? If you liked the video, maybe meet us halfway. Throw us a subscribe. If you didn't like the video, don't subscribe. I don't want you. I don't want you in the tent. But if you liked the video, subscribe. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I love you. More than a friend.